Hi, I'm uh, John Flynn. And many of you might know me as the uh, civil engineer who switched to quilting. And I, the main reason that I started quilting was uh, to relax. And for the past 10 years, I've been uh, selling a quilt frame for hand quilting, which uh, many of you saw me in my rocking chair uh, relaxing and quilting. And in those 10 years of listening to what people really wanted to have in a quilt frame, uh, I finally in this last year developed my multi frame, which you see here as a three rail quilting system that you can machine quilt or hand quilt without basting. So it's relaxing to machine quilt as well as hand quilt. This latest version of the frame comes complete with 48 inch reinforced fiberglass tubes, which are lighter in weight and also keep the completed quilt roll smaller. They are also easily adaptable for larger quilts using lightweight conduit you can buy at your local hardware store. In your box you will find an instruction manual, a step-by-step -step DVD, two large red pipes, three fiberglass rods with adhesive strip, two reinforced frame ends, six rod ends with knobs and screws, three muslin leader strips, and a roll of grow grain ribbon. Lay your leader strip out flat on the table and position the rod on the leader strip so that your adhesive strip is close to the edge on the leader strip. Now pull the cover off of the adhesive strip and roll your rod onto the leader strip. Once your leader strip is attached to the rod, roll the leader strip up on the rod to within three quarters of an inch of the edge and use the rod as a guide to mark your starting point on the leader strip. You also need to mark the center line, measure two feet from the end of these four foot rods and mark the center of the rod. Repeat for the other two rods. Before you mount your quilt, it is important to put registration marks along the edge of the top and back to keep tensions equal. I lay my top one inch from the top edge of the back and put registration marks Along. In this case, I have seams that I can put registration marks on the back. If you didn't have those seams, you would need to uh, put a mark on the top as well. Just a mark every four or five inches to make sure that you maintain equal tension on both the top and the back. I've marked the center of my back and I'm aligning that up on the center line of my leader strip. Now I want to stitch my back to the line on my leader strip. Take one back stitch at the beginning and I tape the back to the table and just do a running stitch along your leader strip. Roll the back up on rod C and attach the other end rod A in the same manner. Bring the center of the back up to the center line on the leader strip. Line the back up on the 
line and stitch the back to the leader strip. The back stitch. Roll the whole back up onto rod C and set those two rods aside. Now you want to attach your top to rod B, putting the center of the top on the center line of the leader strip and attach the top along the edge. I've taped a flannel black tablecloth to my table so that uh, when I lay the batting out, it, it kind of clings to the batting and I lay the top on the batting and I can roll the two together with some tension to keep the roll tight. You could do this on a carpeted surface, but I didn't want to crawl on the floor today. I'm ready to attach my top and batting to the back at rod A. Line up the center of my top one inch in on my back and stitch the top and batting to the back. Make sure that you are stitching just through the top batting and back so that you can quilt right up to the edge of your top without stitching to the leader strip. Slide your rod end onto the fiberglass tube and secure it with one of the set screws provided. The set screws do not have to be screwed clear through the pipe. They just have to retain the rod end from turning. Attach a rod end to both ends of each rod. Now you're ready to attach your frame end so that the teeth match the teeth in the rod ends. Do the same thing on the other end of the frame. Now I want to write, roll the start of my quilt up to within an inch of rod A and tighten both ends of rod A. Now I can tighten the top and batting at rod B and tighten the knob on my right on rod B and tighten the back on rod C and tighten the knob on my right. Now I'm ready for the sewing machine. I've removed the left end of the frame so that I can slide the quilt under the presser foot and then replace the left end tighten the knobs. I haven't lost the tension of my quilt. I need to make sure that the frame ends are flat before I tighten the knobs, but my tension should still be there.
Now I'm ready to put on the side tension ribbons and start quilting. So to apply side tension, slide your grow grain ribbon through the slot in the bottom of the frame end, under the frame end, and pin through all three layers. Then pull on the other end of the grow grain ribbon and pin it to itself. I'm going to do this on two spots on each end of the frame. Now you're ready to begin quilting. Your quilt frame came with two 24 inch red roller pipes. On a 48 inch frame, I generally use just one and the deck of my sewing machine. If your machine doesn't have a deck, you might want uh, both pipes. But uh, generally, if you have a deck, one, one is enough. You want to start by bringing your bobbin thread to the top. And I usually quilt left to right on my quilts because it makes most sense to me. I can quilt clear to the edge because I don't have a leader strip there. It's good to figure out early on how far you can push the frame toward your machine. I don't grip the frame, I'm just guiding it by the C rail. My fingers underneath. Allow the roller pipe to carry all the weight. Once I've crossed the center, I need to re reposition my roller pipe to the other side of the frame. Particularly on a longer piece, if I'm right near the center of the quilt, sometimes the frame bears a little heavy on the sewing machine. It's easy to add uh, just a bag of dried beans to the end of the frame and it unweights uh, the frame on the sewing machine. The uh, roller acts as a fulcrum and then the frame is easier to move. Once I finish this reach, I have a choice of stopping about six inches from the edge of the quilt with my needle down and advancing the frame with the needle in, or I can quilt clear to the edge and break off the thread and start again on the left, which is which I prefer to do because uh, left to right quilting is much easier for me. So I'm at the edge of the quilt and I've secured the thread. Now I take out the side tension ribbons and release the three knobs on both ends of the frame. Now I can simply roll the completed quilt up on rod A. Make sure I don't roll too far so that I can sort of overlap my quilting areas and then tighten the knobs on both ends of rod a, tighten up rod B, and tighten, I just tighten the right end of that, and tighten up rod C, and tighten the right end. Now I can replace my side tension ribbons on both ends of the frame.
and I would slide the frame down to the left end of the quilt and start again by pulling up my bobbin thread and quilt the next reach. Before you buy the PVC pipe to support your frame, it is important to measure the height of your sewing machine deck. This machine measures 3 and 5 eighths inches, so a 3 inch PVC pipe measuring just over 3 and a half inches is perfect. You may have to buy the next size larger pipe and set your machine on a thin piece of plywood if you can't get one that fits perfectly. If you don't have an extension table, you may need to buy two pipes. Sometimes the frame ends get off just one or two teeth and won't lay flat. To correct this, loosen all the knobs on one end of the frame and flatten it and retighten the knob. Notice the diagonal seam on the back so that the bulk of the seam does not roll up in one place on the rod. You will need to move the PVC back and forth to balance the frame. The frame moves smoothly with a palm up grip and a slight upward pressure. Each time you change the bobbin, you will want to bring the bobbin thread to the top. If you have a top loading bobbin, you will need to slide the frame down to the edge of the quilt and insert the bobbin in the space between the edge of the quilt and the frame end. Use a hand mirror and a flashlight to check the tension on the back. When it's time to move ahead, stop with the needle down about six inches from the edge of the quilt. I like to draw my quilting design on a paper roll with four inch lines to work out the design. Then I trace over the pattern multiple times with a ballpoint pen memorizing the quilting pattern. I find this much easier than following the line drawn directly on the quilt.
A good way to get a feel for the frame is to practice it like you would your handwriting, with practicing O's and E's and L's. You can quilt a horizontal line by holding the frame against the back of the sewing machine. To quilt parallel lines, space with wooden blocks.
guide the foot along a quarter inch thick ruler to make short straight lines. One way to transfer a design is with a perforator pattern. Rub over the pattern with a pounce filled with cornstarch. Tie a quilt by setting your machine on zigzag and stitching a small design. Lift your presser foot, move to the next spot, and stitch again. Tie in your thread ends with a tapestry needle and an open-sided needle threader, or you can use a self-threading needle. I made myself a batting sampler to see how different battings react to machine quilting. The more you practice, the better. Even though the quilting area is around four inches, all the patterns interlock and there is no indication that the quilting was done in four inch strips. Keep practicing. You will end up with little quilts you can cut up and bind to make placemats, pot holders, or my variation of a rag quilt. This Wheel of Fortune quilt is basted with water-soluble thread and ready to quilt off the frame. Use your quilting design to enhance your piece pattern. I use the pebbles a lot to give my quilts texture. I machine basted this quilt and then removed the third rail and hand quilted it on a two rail frame. Here I machine basted with washout thread and did the larger quilting pattern off the frame. Remember you can hand quilt without basting on your multi-frame. You sit comfortably in your chair and the frame adjusts to you.
you're through quilting, the frame and stand store out of the way. Mm-hmm.